Hello, my name is Mr. Chippen. I am the AP Biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. And this is question number two of the 2023 AP Bio exam FRQs. And I have here in front of us the question number two. I'll read the question carefully or quickly and then go through the different responses for it. Uh, elevated levels of CO2 increase the rate of photosynthesis and growth in plants. Scientists studying the mechanisms involved in these increases examined a variety of species and found that when plants are exposed to elevated levels of CO2, there is an increase in the number of chloroplasts per cell. To investigate whether elevated levels of CO2 have a similar effect on the number of mitochondria in plant cells, the science then selected six of these species to quantify, quantify the number of mitochondria per cell when cells were exposed to normal and elevated levels of CO2. And then here's your table. And this is the second question of the FRQ, and so you know we're going to be expected to graph this. And so let's look at these together. First of all, let's just get an idea of the table. This is I'm just kind of walking you through the process that I would take if I was taking this exam. And I see the numbers are anywhere from, looks like 0.3 being the lowest, and... 2.4 being the highest, maybe. And notice the error bars are pretty small, pretty small increments. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to make this go from 0 to 3 on my graph. Uh, let's get there first. So part A, describe the role of the intermembrane inter mitochondrial membrane cellular respiration. Uh, the intermembrane is the site of the electron transport chain. You could probably also... And so it says describe the role, so it's asking for a little bit more than that. And so uh, it's the site of electron transport chain, and the purpose of the electron transport chain is to build a proton gradient using electron carriers that are going to power proton pumps to build that gradient in the intermembrane space. And then the uh, ATP synthase will use that proton gradient in order to create ATP. Don't need the prompt to do that. So part B, using the template provided for your response, construct an appropriately labeled graph that represents the data in table one. Determine the species, which species show a difference in the number of mitochondria between normal and elevated levels. Okay, so <clears throat> in the FRQ answer that are the actual responses that they, not responses, the questions that they give on the website, they don't provide a template for us. And so I don't have the same graph that they provided for us. And so I'll just walk you through kind of my graphing process. First of all, um, what is my independent dependent variables? So what's being measured is the number of mitochondria at two different levels, right? And so that's going to be on my y-axis, the number of mitochondria. And it's going to be based on species. And so this is going to be my x-axis. And this is going to be a bar graph because... This is just species, right? There's no, there's no tracking, there's no numbers. And so this is gonna be a bar graph and each species is gonna have two bars, one that represents normal and another that represents elevated. And so essentially um, six sets of bars or 12 different bars in sets of two for each species. So you'll label species one, two, three, four, five, six along the bottom or around along the X axis and the Y axis are gonna be number uh, mitochondria or the number of mitochondria per 100 micrometer squared cell area. And just make sure you label that appropriately. And then you're going to also have to provide some sort of legend so that they understand that you have a normal bar and an elevated CO2 bar. And, um, you know, correctly label your error bars and such. But I would start the graph at zero on the y-axis and then move up to three and then appropriately space out my spaces in there and then probably leave some definitely leave some space at the top so that you can put your top error bars but even so if you leave it at three so this is 2.4 and it's going to be 0.2 so it's going to get up to like 0.62 so shouldn't be much of a problem and the second part of this determine which species show a difference and so i went ahead and looked at this ahead of time and what you're looking for in this question is if any of the error bars overlap. And so do any of the species show a difference? And if they don't overlap, then yes, there is a difference. If they do overlap, then there's no statistical 
significant difference between the two. And none of the species have overlapping error bars. And so the correct answer for this is that all six species show a significant difference. Uh, part C, based on the data in table one, describe the relationship between the level of CO2 and the average number of mitochondria per area of the cell. Well, the level of CO2. So when you have elevated CO2, you have across the board, you have an increase in the um, number of mitochondria. And so you can, it says describe the relationship. You can say that the two are directly related because there's a direct relationship because when the amount of CO2 goes up, the amount of mitochondria also go up. Simple. Uh, part D. The leaves of a particular plant species are typically green, but scientists noticed in leaves, a plant in which leaves have white stripes. They determine the stripes result from a mutation in the mitochondrial DNA, that's important, that interferes with the development of chloroplasts. The scientists cross plants using the pollen from a plant with white striped plants and ovules from a plant with green leaves. Okay, so this is important. You have to know these two terms, pollen and ovules. Pollen is from the male plant and ovules from the female plant. It's not something that I teach in my class, but hopefully just looking at the prefixes, ovule being uh, a female, um, and the mitochondria has to do with passing from the female organ or the female cell. So predict <clears throat> the phenotype of the leaves of the offspring of the cross. And so since the ovules come from a plant with green leaves and the mitochondrial DNA is what affects this, then I'm going to say that I'm going to predict that all the plants are going to have green leaves. What is my justification? My justification is that mitochondria are maternally inherited and because the maternal mitochondria have normal mitochondria, then all the offspring are going to um, inherit those normal mitochondria and have a normal phenotype. That's my justification. Uh, explain why plants with the same genotype are able to are able to differ in the structure and or number of certain organelles in response to changes in atmospheric levels of CO2. Um, this would be simple, right? We, we talked about phenotypic plasticity in class, and we talked about the idea that uh, environmental factors can influence phenotype. And so you could say, uh, for your explanation, you could mention phenotypic plasticity, or you could just say that environment can affect phenotype. How does that work? Part of your explanation should be that it could be a cell signaling mechanism that the cell, once it receives a certain amount of CO2, will create more mitochondria. Or you could even mention that the mitochondria independently respond to the amount of CO2 since mitochondria are able to replicate independent of the rest of the cell. Hopefully this was helpful. This was a big question. Uh, typically the graph is going to give you one, two, three, four points. It'll be three for the construct part, one for the determine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points for this one is what I am seeing. Hopefully you got all nine points. Um, if you have questions, please ask down below in the comments. Would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. I will be making more AP Bio material in the future. And I will also be releasing the answers to questions three through six in the very near future. Thank you for watching.